Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. I am coming to you from yet another tiny flat. Actually, I think this is the smallest one that I've ever stayed in, conserving space and money here in the UK since September 2nd. Yeah, it's been that long, and I have to admit, there's a part of me that wants to get home, although I certainly want to move here. I don't want to live in a place like this. You can see from this angle, you can see both walls. Um, I'm currently sitting on the bed, and this is the only space I've got in that direction. There's a bathroom and a tiny, tiny little kitchen up against the wall. That's about the extent of it. You take about half a step in any direction and run into a wall. Anyway, but it's fine. It serves my purposes. Let's move on. So I talk about nuclear power in space, nuclear propulsion in space periodically. Just wanted to give you a quick update on what's going on with Rolls-Royce. They are very aggressively promoting nuclear power in space right now. Rolls-Royce has been doing nuclear power for well over 60 years. Um, it's been a big part of their business model, but this, of course, is new. Modular nuclear reactors, small-scale nuclear reactors. You can have a look at one of them right here. That's a model of one anyway, a one-quarter scale. These things are extremely small, extremely compact, are not cooled in the same way as a reactor is here on Earth and have, you know, a lot of purposes, a lot of tasks that they can be turned towards that uh, maybe conventional nuclear reactors would have a hard time with. But the most important application, in my opinion, is space, both in terms of space flight and nuclear power in space. And although Rolls-Royce wouldn't grant me an on-camera interview, they were willing to tell me a number of things about their new reactors. So let's get to it. So here's a better look at this one quarter scale model of a space nuclear reactor. By the way, this thing is designed to produce about 200 kilowatts worth of power or about double what NASA is looking for for their future moon bases. And Rolls-Royce has been hauling this thing around to space conferences all over Europe and probably the United States as well. And they've been sending a lot of their staff along to promote it, including engineers that I have had the good fortune to talk to. As a matter of fact, these people surprised me when all of them recognized me and the work that I had done about Rolls-Royce and the whole concept of a nuclear starship powered by a Rolls-Royce nuclear reactor. But space-based nuclear power is only a small part of Rolls-Royce's overall strategy. They want to use these things everywhere. And by the way, they're not the only ones. My daughter was also working on small modular reactors when she was doing her internship at a reactor in Virginia last year. Small mod modular reactors, rather, are not just used in space or not just used to power small communities and that sort of thing. They're actually adding them on to existing reactors to increase the amount of power that these power stations can provide to the local communities. So they're taking areas that already have nuclear reactors and tacking on additional modular reactors. Why are they doing this? Because they are much, much more affordable. The parts are all mass produced and duplicated, a lot of them off the shelf components. You don't have to build this thing as part of an overall construction construction plan. Instead, what you do is the vast majority of the parts are manufactured in large quantities elsewhere and then shipped out to numerous facilities across the country and indeed across the world. So Rolls-Royce overall strategy is maybe to deploy 5% of their modular reactors to space, probably even less than that, and then to send the rest of them across the UK to provide about 30% of the United Kingdom's overall power needs. And this is something that they can definitely do. One small modular reactor can provide half a gigawatt of power. 
That being the case though, small modular reactors are not the total solution for green energy in the future or anything like that. There are drawbacks to them, which my daughter made very clear to me the last time I visited her in Virginia. Here's the biggest problem. They require the same level of security that a conventional reactor requires. Even if they're small, and even though they're a lot safer than a conventional reactor, if they were to fall into the hands of criminals or terrorists, they could turn into very, very dangerous weapons. And as a result, they need the same level of security that any other reactor requires. Therefore, Rolls-Royce is putting these reactors in the same location that decommissioned nuclear reactors used to occupy in the UK, and they say that it's because the infrastructure is already there, it will be easier to hook up to power stations there, etc., but the biggest advantage is the security requirements for these reactors can be satisfied in these kinds of locations, and I actually talked to the Rolls-Royce staff and they all agreed with this. Putting a small modular reactor in the middle of a small community without a lot of security is a very, very bad idea. The best place to put these things is either on the side of existing reactors where you have a lot of security already, maybe on a military base where you have built-in security, and then use the power from the modular reactor to supply the communities that surround the military base, for example, or the best place put them out in space. So modular nuclear reactors in space are much, much smaller than the reactors that are going to be used on Earth because they don't have to generate nearly as much power. The Rolls-Royce model is small enough to fit inside any 5-meter fairing, which means a Vulcan Centaur could haul it up or a wide variety of other rockets. It can be used for propulsion and for power, both for spacecraft and for space bases, nuclear thermal engines, nuclear electric engines, and of course providing power for moon bases which is going to be extremely important in my opinion i think solar power is going to run into lots of problems on the moon simply because our tidally locked satellite remains plunged into darkness 14 days out of 28 that being the case though there are regions of the poles on the moon that remain in constant sunlight albeit not tremendously powerful sunlight so that theoretically could work, but NASA has already stated that small modular reactors are the future of their space exploration projects. So Rolls-Royce is definitely following NASA's plans and intends to provide a solution for NASA by the time Artemis 5 comes around in 2028 or 2029, when NASA is planning to set up the first lunar base anyway. And of course, this is going to have applications on Mars as well. Remember that even though solar power does have uses on Mars, the sun is not nearly as powerful thought that far out from the sun as opposed to the kind of solar power that we're accustomed to using here on Earth. The further our bases get out into the solar system, the further away from the sun we get, the more meager solar power is going to be and inefficient. That being the case, we're almost certainly going to need nuclear power as we expand out into the solar system, especially for human colonies. Oh, and before I forget, we have less than 20 subscribers to go to 90,000. Please subscribe! Oh, okay. Um, let me get a handle on myself for a moment again. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Rolls-Royce modular reactors. These reactors come also with their own shielding, their own cores. Therefore, they don't require any concrete or any water cooling. Instead, they use heat radiators very much in the same way that the ISS uses heat radiators in order order to disperse the heat generated by these reactors, and as I said before, they also come with their own radiation shielding, so that is not a serious consideration either. These, in my opinion, are going to be the future of space exploration, both in terms of providing power for our lunar bases, our Martian bases, and especially for providing power for next generation propulsion that will allow us to travel the solar system far more swiftly and therefore far more efficiently. 
And now that I've had an opportunity to speak to a number of engineers who are involved in this project, I must say that I have a high degree of confidence that Rolls-Royce will be able to provide a nuclear solution for NASA's ambitions in the next six to seven years, which would be right on schedule. That is to say, assuming that NASA actually manages to get up an annual cadence with Artemis missions here in the next couple of years, and I'm far from certain about that. That, it could very well be that Rolls-Royce has all of this done before NASA even needs it. But nevertheless, I think that Rolls-Royce is an outstanding candidate for a cooperative partner with NASA, with ESA, and with SpaceX for that matter, in exploring the solar system in the decades to come. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and once again, please check out the description for various ways to support this content so I can keep bringing it to you, and as always, stay angry about space!